Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to discuss, well, second year players. Uh, but before I get into second year players and the impact that they're going to probably have on this team, you know, we'll talk a little bit about also the, you know, what happened in the first year and, and what can we expect. But before I dive into all that, I really kind of wanted to talk about what this channel is doing and where we're going and what direction. Um, I know in my first videos in my first year, I look at back at some of them and I kind of roll my eyes because of just the production. I, I, I always want to grow and get better. Um, so a lot of that first year videos, I was really kind of putting in pieces, trying to uh, get, you know, so the, my funny tags, I love adding those type of things in, reaction stuff about what's going on within the story, and I something I definitely want to bring back. So I should be bringing back some videos, continuing with the streaming, because, I mean, that was a big transition that I wanted to make when I was making just regular videos. Uh, so when a guy like Game Time Brian came around and... Uh, and it just clicked. I mean, we, we kind of yin and yang. We don't always agree. And I like that about the channel is that it's not always going to be an agreement. Um, but a lot of the times we have the same direction in the sense of where these cowboys, whether they're good, whether they're bad. And we can kind of point out the times when they're bad as well, too. So that's what makes this channel very nice. And and I and I think the best part of out of it all was you know, obviously the chat. I think the chat is where it's at. Um, and the no me to Dr. Seuss it there. But it, it's true. I mean, when I go in here, I... I I sometimes feel like we're only gonna have like 10 minutes worth of material but it's the chat that gets it going you guys have some amazing points and that's what that's what we love and i and i think that's the addicting part of it is just to talk football whether you agree or don't agree with someone is the fact that you can talk football and and yeah maybe point at each other and say see i was right about that situation so again i look forward to what this channel has because i want to do the mixture of the videos funny stuff here there and then of course uh the streaming and and then the in between is is the all the juice the meat and potatoes the the collaboration when it comes to other youtubers and, and what they they bring i mean it's different opinions and, and again i cannot get away from the fact that i love bringing different opinions onto this uh this channel so um as we did our nfl draft we were trying to figure that whole thing out and, and seeing guys like mark holmes and hearing advice from guys like dmv fanatic I, you know you can't help but but either try to put implement what they're saying and, and go forward, or you just ignored it and and you kind of sink. But you know, with guys like that and their success, I, I definitely want to follow suit and bring a lot of what they're they're saying onto this channel. So um, so so bear with me as I, as I have my growing pains. But you know, let's talk about these guys last year, the rookies from last year. That really, I mean. There was some guys that nobody had any expectation for. Some of them, of course, there were very upset picks. And so it, that doesn't change this year. I mean, I, I knew there was going to be some people that we were going to pick that nobody was going to be really happy about. And there was a couple there. But hopefully it ends up like the past couple of drafts where we don't like these particular picks because we had other people on the board. Not because we didn't like the players, but because we had other people on the board that we'd rather pick. But let's go on our first one. Our first round draft pick was, of course, Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith, the guys that, you know, as soon as we got drafted, everybody assumed, you know, oh, they reached. It was the end of the second round. And at the beginning of the third round, you should have got, well, Dallas was picking at the end of the first round because they were competing. And so each year when they compete, you're picking last at the end of the round. So, I mean, you kind of have to deal with the good and the bad when it comes to those being, you know, being successful in general. Um, if you're not trading away picks to pick up more picks, you know, and that's some of the stuff that Philly was doing, and, and you got to give him credit for that. But, you know, we're not that type of team. We, we really we rely a lot when it comes to draft picks. Now, even when you look at this year and how Brandon Cooks and uh, Stephon Gilmore came, that was off a of draft pick. So either way, it was generated off of the draft and so i think that's what this team really likes to do so when you had this guy like tyler smith coming in of course we're having to pick him at the end of the first round because he's probably not going to be there by the end of the second round so you had to pick your guy early and tyler smith was that guy now you had guys like mel kuyper for example that they picked yeah tyler smith was going to come here you know dan brugler i think he was one of those guys as well too so it wasn't a big huge shock it was an offensive line was a big need and, and some people were also thinking Offensive line was a need this year. I probably one of those guys was me too. So, um, but when you look at it, Tyler Smith ended up being an amazing pickup for this Dallas Cowboys team, especially with what was there afterwards. Um, when you look at Tyler Smith, he was able to he was starting in the inside at left guard, of course transition to the left tackle. 
Um, I, I think with that whole thing, I, we didn't really worry about Tyler Smith. I mean, there were some moments, but we were more worried about the Tyron Smith, the, the where's, what's going on in the guard position, and, and, and when somebody would get hurt, what's going on now? And so I think we're still in that same, same problem. It's just, you know, have you been able to address enough of the offensive line uh, to not worry about it? And, and, to kinda, and I think the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff believe that they have something like that. Um, we obviously know who the five best players are, but can one of them stay healthy to be a continuous five players? Um, so another guy that we come into, and I know DMV definitely uh, uh, talked about this guy, and I think it was a very un- interesting subject because this guy does have a lot of potential, and that's Sam Williams. He was our second-round draft pick that year. Guys were picking him in the third and fourth round. Again, he's on this team. He, that first year, I don't know if everybody had a lot of expectations on him because, of course, you know, he he was like Micah Parson lookalike. Um, now, if, if his game would elevate that, I think, we'd be, that'd be an amazing thing, but you know, you have to be appreciate what you have. And, and Sam Smith, Sam Smith, sorry, Sam Williams, I'm over here thinking about the singer. Uh, Sam Williams, he was a guy that kind of just made us forget about, you know, Gregory. Uh, Gregory was a guy that, that you know, would hurt us sometimes with flags and, and not being available. And, 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 of course, the whole controversy with the NFL. So, I mean, just not availability. And so Sam Williams was available but only got to play like 20 27% of the snaps but had some good stats to go with those. I, I remember there was moments that we felt like he came in in clutch situations. It just he needs to put the rest of it together. So Sam Williams, I think, is going to be a tremendous, uh, you know, a star going forward. It's just, you know, with the all the, the rotation of that defensive line, will he get a little bit more of an increase in snaps? And, I, and I'm hoping so. Um, so you should see something there. I mean, his game was definitely elevated from where his first year was, where he didn't have a whole lot of moves in his repertoire. And and now that second year, yeah, man, they're gonna have a whole mini, another uh, uh, camp to basically go through and learn some more moves and, and watch film. He's got he's gonna get bigger, so I mean, I, there's a lot of things that say he's going to get better. And Dan Quinn, of course, returning is going to be a big number for that. Um, so let's move to our third round draft pick. Who was our third round draft pick? Mm, let's see, the guy that we all forgot about, but we all complained about. We didn't forget about him totally. We just forgot that he was kind of on the team because nobody played him because, you know, he was kind of like in a Jabril Cox type of situation. But, of course, Jalen Tolbert. Tolbert, the wide receiver that was supposed to come in here, kind of make us forget about Gallup. He at least made us forget about Noah Brown, but then the Cowboys kept shoving him in their face. So everybody's kind of understand what's going on with Jalen Tolbert. Why isn't he getting any playing time? And so there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that we just don't see. Um, we had guys like Simi Fajoko, you know, what's going on with him? So there's the wide receiver when it comes to that. They just need opportunities. I think these guys, Simi included, but Jalen, he just needs opportunities. I mean, you don't get a lot of balls thrown your way. You're not going to get a whole lot of catches. Now, was he blocking downfield? He just didn't play a lot. He wasn't on the field a whole lot. So when you look at him in this offseason, he's definitely ripped. He's got some muscles going on, but does muscles, uh, you know, does that equal stats? Does that equal a great player? I, I don't know, but I mean, he looks like he's in football shape. Um, and, and, and I say that he's in shape. He's not in football shape because until you start getting hit and everything, you're not really in football shape. Uh, but Jalen Tolbert, I expect a bigger year from Tolbert, especially with our wide receiver core. I mean, yes, you bring in a guy like Cooks, but you got rid of a guy like Noah Brown. So there's going to be rotations. There's going to be opportunities, and there's definitely going to be a lot more opportunities this year than there were last year. Um, so the next one on my list was a guy that I loved, and, and that's what made the second round draft pick of this year a little bit controversial. Because last year in the fourth round, we picked up a guy named Jake Ferguson, a guy that I did a whole piece on back last year, and a guy that I really loved in this offense. He was just, he was made to be in this offense, uh, a blocking tight end that can roll out and, and catch the ball. And I just don't think Dallas utilized him enough last year, even though he was in every single game. I mean, it wasn't like he wasn't being used. It just wasn't being thrown to a lot because you had a guy like Dalton Schultz that was blocking the progress. And and Dalton Schultz elevated his game as well because you had two tight ends that were sitting behind him that could do the job. And so when you got a guy like Luke Schoonmaker, he just an addition. He's a 2.0 of Jake Ferguson. I, and again, I love Jake Ferguson. That's my guy. But that's why you got Luke as well, too. I mean, it's just definitely a better version. But I think all of us would definitely have been okay if we just kept a Jake and not brought Luke in. But, hey, 
don't look a gift horse in the mouth, man. Just appreciate what you have because these guys are going to be dynamic and they're young. So I, I love where the direction of this tight end room is going to go. I think you just need to add one more into the mix other than Hendershot. Uh, you need four tight ends. You need somebody, maybe even a fifth one. Um, but I, I just, I, I want to see more out of this group because there's so much potential and so much that they can do. You saw in their college careers, they, they, these teams utilized them very well. And I just want to see Dallas continue that transition. And, you know, with, with Schottenheimer, I think you're going to have that with the West Coast offense. Usually the tight end stands up a little bit more, but um, you, you should still see these guys really, really shine. Um, so the fifth round draft pick from last year was a guy that, yeah, I see the potential when you hear, I think you're hearing the same exact kind of whispers that you're hearing about kind of like with Steele, with the coaching staff, but Matt Walesco. Walesco was a guy that, you know, he didn't get a lot of play. I think he got thrown into that conversation, same thing as Josh Ball, because Josh Ball has just never really been able, been available to us. Uh, you've heard some okay things, but you haven't heard any of the great things. Uh, when you heard about Steele, people were ready to get rid of Steele. But coaching staff was like, no, no, Steel is great. Steel is good. Um, same thing kind of happens in that Walesco conversation. I think they really relied on Walesco being the backup. And when he got hurt, it threw the, you know, threw the plans kind of off. And so they kind of had to regroup and, and, and kind of piece together and glue it. And that's the reason why we wanted to add some of those pieces. And you do have some pieces coming in with Richards. But that's more of a guard guy. And even though he played tackle, I think that's where they, they're expecting Walesco. Walesco is a big dude with long arms. And if he can transition, I mean, you might see a guy like a like a Mark Colombo, a guy that could really kind of hold down a, a position for quite a while. But I think he just, again, needs the opportunities. And with Tyron Smith being that guy that's in that left tackle position, he might get the opportunity if uh, if they don't feel comfortable. Of course, they, they drop uh Tyler Smith out there, but I think that's Walesco is definitely going to be the plan for them. I'm not sure if it would be the plan for me, but you do have some bodies there. So um, the next one I want to talk about, I think, is is one of those ones that's a very special. Uh, a, a guy that you see coming in, and I and you're hearing it this year. Of course, Eric Scott being drafted at the end of this round of this year, being compared a lot to the position that Deron Bland was in. Bland, of course, being a fifth round late draft pick. Um, wasn't expecting a whole lot out of him. He liked his game, and you heard some coaching talking about him. Al Harris, of course, coaching him up. Um, that was a very big surprise because when he came in, it was a very well, it was needed. We The Dallas Cowboys defense needed another corner because, of course, Lewis went down, and then you had Anthony Brown going down. So that's two Two and three, the number two and three corners went down, and you expect your number four to come in, or five or six, and, and be that starters going against number two wide receivers or number one wide receivers. So you see where it should not have worked, but it did work because Deron Bland was coached up, and and it, when you bring in this year, you put in a Stephon Gilmore in there. I expect big things from this group. So again, I'm excited about all these guys, these draft picks, these young guys. I mean, you got guys that you got. Within that undrafted free agency in that second year too, you got, of course, you have Lindstrom that was a center. Um, that that's not a shocker that they they got high hopes on him because he did good in college, and and so I'm not really shocked about that. But you have Bell, for example, in the safety position, and there's three safeties there, maybe even a possible fourth one with Overshone. Um, so you, you you wonder where Bell's going to kind of fall into that category. Uh, where you look at Overshone is going to be more towards like a Curse and uh, you know J Ron Curse or um, Dono Wilson, and then you got Bell, which is going to be more towards like uh, you know Hooker, where he'd be more of a coverage guy, maybe a couple of hits, but for most of the coverage. So you know he's a little bit shorter. So you know you wonder how that's going to transition. Uh, but again, a guy that you can get excited about. I mean, he's unwrapped free agents. You know they, they get ex you get you get excited about some of them. I know there was ones that we picked up this year that hey man I, I'm excited to see what they can do because they've had some great you know collegiate you know opportunities and careers. But how will that transition? I mean they were playing in small schools, so it wasn't like they got to show off a whole lot. So again I where those rookies go it could go up or down and it's never 100 percent success rate so even guys that are looking good right now could all of a sudden just not look great uh so i'm interested to see where these young guys go but th when you look at this team this team is a very young team just the leaders that they have in the locker room most of them are not young 
those guys are been here for a couple of years and so so you do have that mixture and I you know it, it's just nice to see because I know when Dallas Cowboys before it was either all old all young and there was no in between so um, you definitely see a nice little, uh, um, you know, kind of just blending in together. So again, I appreciate everybody coming through. And, and if, if you're down with some of this stuff that I want to do within this channel, I hope you would join us, you know, share my videos, you know, like them, you know, subscribe. I, I appreciate anything you guys do, even when you're trash talking. I love it as well, too. So, again, guys, thank you for coming by. Please share if you can. But don't forget to always do what? Ring that bell. Yes. yes.